cut two bell peppers into strips. You can remove that little white part of the pepper. It tends to be a little bitter. You don't have to though. Take one large onion or two medium onions and slice it. You can leave these slices pretty large. Take six cloves of garlic, you can use 10 if you like, and just give it a little hit to remove that skin and then slice it. Take one celery rib and you can chop this or you can slice it up like shown. Take some fresh parsley, about a quarter cup's worth, and mince it. There's many different ways to make this. I love it with these oil cured olives. And I use these big green Sicilian olives too. These black oil, oil cured olives, they go by a few different names. They really make the dish. There's a million ways to make cacciatore, you know, hunter's chicken. It's kind of like the standard way would be not to put any of the olives or the capers in, and that, in my opinion, wouldn't be that good. You could put mushrooms in if you want to. That's a lot of recipes will have mushrooms. Let me show you the chicken. Chicken thighs and chicken legs. They're both dark meat, so they'll be juicy. We're gonna sear them and then we'll braise it in the oven. It's more forgiving than if you were to use like just like chicken breasts. You can use any chicken you want, or you know, traditionally this is just done with a whole chicken. These olives, make sure you rinse them. They're really salty. Also rinse your capers if you're gonna use them. Unfortunately, I didn't buy the pitted version and so I had to remove the pits. Even if you do buy the pitted version, make sure you check because once in a while there'll be one or two pits in there. And you know, if you're serving that or if you're eating it yourself and you expect there not to be a pit and you take a bite, also with your knife too, when you chop them up, if you're not expecting it to be there, you kind of ruin your knife. I'm doing this on this plastic cutting board here because these olives tend to like get the cutting board really, uh, almost like die, you'd see my hands right now. Got salt and pepper. Keep one hand clean. One hand, your you know your chicken flipping hand, and the other hand, so you, so you don't have to keep going back and forth. We're gonna put salt and pepper on here. We're gonna pat we're gonna pat it dry even after we put, put the salt and pepper on before we sear, and then we'll put more salt on after we sear. So we're gonna salt the chicken two times. I'm gonna let my pan heat up. This is stainless steel pan, so keep it low. We'll put oil on here. We're not gonna move the chicken. It'll naturally release. And after you're done searing them, put them right back here on the cutting board, even the raw, where the raw chicken was, because it doesn't matter. This is all gonna go in the oven anyway, so, so you don't have to keep dirtying more dishes. Gonna try to fit in four and four, so it's two batches. Just leave the chicken alone, don't move it. It'll naturally release. Also, don't get splashed in the eye. Doesn't have to go as long on the non-skin side. 
and then we'll take it out and we'll do the other batch. Probably about, took about seven, 10 minutes to get it that golden. So maybe you want to let it go even a little bit longer or, or not. It's gonna cook in the oven for a while, so don't worry. Let's remove these and we'll do the second batch. I'm not gonna show you the second batch, but do the second batch. Salt the chicken again that just came out. When it's hot, it's able to absorb uh, the salt. The salt will kind of melt into it and it'll, it'll stay a lot better. It's like when you fry food, you always salt it. Chicken doesn't have a lot of flavor, so you want to put a lot of salt on it. All the chicken is done, it's salted, it's on the side. Onion. Peppers. I'm trying to coat the chicken fat that came off there and then the oil all over the peppers and onions and we're gonna let them cook. They're gonna take like seven, 10 minutes before we move on to the next step. Almost forgot, celery too. I gotta tell you, it doesn't even really matter. If, even if you saute these that long, we're gonna braise this in the oven for an hour. Everything is gonna get soft anyway. So don't, don't kill yourself. Don't kill yourself on all these times, making sure everything's perfect. If nothing will scare away a new cook if they tell you you have to do something a certain way. Like I put puttanesca up on TikTok the other day and I put chili flakes in, I think, after I did something and somebody said, no, nope, the recipe is ruined. And I said, I said, okay. <laughs> because it's not, it's not. Why do you think they give you chili flakes when you're at a restaurant that you could put on afterwards, you know? So don't, uh, don't think you have to do everything perfect. You don't. You only have to do things the way I say. That's it. It's the only, it's the only one you need to worry about. <laughs> what are things you can do to experiment? You can add cherry peppers to it. You know how much I love cherry peppers. They're in, I have like 15 recipes that use them. You can use red roasted peppers. You could even put sun-dried tomatoes in here. You could put artichoke hearts. There, there's a lot of things you can do and come up with new ones. You know, you could, if you want some different vegetables, you want peas in here, that would be great. Maybe some carrot, that's fine. Everything's fine. Everything is okay. Okay, let's add in the garlic. Try to get it into the bottom, but it's okay if you don't. And uh, about maybe three minutes here. I don't recommend adding any more salt here. We have a lot of salt on the chicken and, and the olives are very salty. But what you can do is when you have your sauce at the end, right before you serve, you can taste it, test it. And if you need to add in any more, then you add in more. But we're gonna put those olives in right at the end. So just remember that. Okay, we're gonna put in three quarter cup. So, about there. Turn my heat up a little bit and take a spoon, whatever, it doesn't matter. And uh, just kind of scrape the bottom. Let this uh, wine evaporate for two, three minutes. I have my heat on about medium to medium high right here. I'm gonna add in the tomato paste. About three ounces. Let this cook for a minute, then we'll add in our chicken stock and our plum tomatoes. Chicken stock. Plum tomatoes. So let's bring this to a simmer for a few minutes and then let's get it all set up and get it in the oven. Just to help you help you a tiny bit, this is not really gonna make much of a difference because you're putting sauce down there, but touch of oil, paper towel, and just rub the sides, rub the bottom, all that. Here's our sauce.
It's all in there and it's only about a half inch, maybe three quarter inch high, which is exactly what you want. You take the chicken pieces, submerge them, but keep the skin not touching the sauce. This is ready for braising. We're gonna do 325 degrees for 45 minutes to maybe even an hour and 10. You want your sauce to reduce, to get thick. It's gonna to cling to the chicken. It's gonna be really good. So it doesn't have to be exact the time. And then you can take this one out and you can let it sit. So let's get it in the oven and let's see how it looks. All right, so that's been cooking for an hour. Here is the olives. Just gonna kind of force the olives down. Just kind of away from the chicken skin. Five, 10 minutes, keep it at 325, and then broil for the last few minutes and keep an eye on it. Oh yeah. So that's chicken cacciatore. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope you enjoyed that crispy skin. Hope you enjoy the sauce. You could serve this with pasta. You can serve it with rice. You can serve it by itself. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.